Hey, John Cristani here, and I'm gonna go over in this video how to find a mentor. I'm gonna go over what to not do and what to do. And I'm also gonna be using stories from my life of how I've been able to find teachers and mentors and folks that are just a lot smarter and more successful and experienced than me to help me out in my career so that even someone who has been a C student in school has been able to earn tens of millions of dollars in my own business. So let's go right into it. Hey man, can you can you mentor me? I'm 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 really, you know, I I'll do whatever you say, man. Uh no. I get that question all the freaking time. Hey man, will you mentor me? And it 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 first off that is not a way to go about things. I'm gonna go about the real ways to actually find a mentor. Now, the biggest mistake is, is again, just saying, hey, can you mentor me, shows you, shows people like me or anyone that you don't know what you really want, that you don't have a path that you're on, that you're not working to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. You're waiting for someone to lift you up. You're waiting for someone to put their arm around you and say, it's okay, buddy boy, I'm gonna show you the light. I'm gonna take you the way. I'm gonna give you everything you need. Don't wait. Oops. Don't wait, do move along your chosen path. Now, one thing I was doing was I always dreamed of getting onto TV, of getting into TV ads and doing late night infomercials. I remember sitting at home, sick from school, watching these folks pitch things on TV. And I said, man, I wonder if I could do that. I know that seems like a weird goal, but it was a, it was a dream of mine. And I started creating a TV ad and I spent a quarter million dollars creating this TV ad and it completely bombed. <laughs> And it was devastating, you know, I'd spent a quarter million dollars and I put up all these ads and I made back a hundred bucks from a quarter million dollars to making a hundred bucks. Horrible start, right? But not many people do TV ads. And what I did was I did a lot of research on the people who do know how to do TV ads successfully. And I did, and I found the people behind the popular infomercials in my category, in the business opportunity niche. And I reached out to every one of them. I reached out through social media, through email, through any way I could find. And I found people, I mean, these are not necessarily famous people. So they don't get a huge volume of messages, but I was able to find someone who was interested in talking with me. You know, I sent all these folks, I said, hey, I put out a TV show. I put out an infomercial in this category and it failed and I'm wondering your thoughts. But because I was actually moving along that path, because I was showing progress, because I went over insurmountable hurdles to create a TV show, to put it on TV, to get data back, and to even just have the data to say, hey, I put up TV ads and they failed, showed that I was a much higher quality, different individual than many of the other people that my, you know, my, my mentor and friend now is, um, was used to. Now, my mentor in this space, he's a retired direct response marketer who has sold over $500 million. I don't have enough money in this, in this gun to even demonstrate what $500 million is. I mean, each of these is 10,000 bucks, okay? This is, this is a hundred, this is, these are a hundred, hundred dollar bills. Um, $500 million would be like, it would be 50,000 stacks of these. Just to give you an idea, a pallet of cash, of just pallet of $100 bills is a million dollars. It's a lot of money, okay? And he's mentoring me now. He gives me advice on how to do marketing. Folks, I don't need to be smart. What I need to do is be an action taker. I need to move along the path. And what I found is I get smart people behind me. Number two is 
Don't ask something that you could Google yourself or you could find out by maybe watching one of your mentor's videos or interviews or one of their other kind of more personal recordings, okay? It's just a waste of my time, folks, to repeat things that folks already know that I've already talked about. And if I'm being asked to repeat myself from the beginning of, of somebody's outreach to me, I mean, that's just insane. The other thing is I get is people asking me for money. They say, hey, will you give me money? I'll, I'll do stuff for it, I'll work for it. No, I work really hard for my money. I'm not just giving it to anybody who randomly asks me, any one of my like millions of people who follow me just randomly ask me. That's crazy. It doesn't make sense. What are you guys thinking? But seriously, folks, if I am gonna give money away, I give it away to charities. I have my own charity. It's, it's, a, ta it's a tax deduction. You're not a tax deduction. What you do want to do is you do want to know your goals and ask very specific questions that cannot be Googled. An example from my own life is I once asked a very specific question on a very specific forum um, for affiliate marketers. I asked a specific question about Facebook and advertising on Facebook. Uh, and it was a very high quality question. Most folks wouldn't even know to ask it, but I asked and I actually got a response from the most respected, one of the most successful affiliate marketers of all time, um, Charles No himself. And he, I remember his response. He said, the answer, the obstacle is the way. And that was all I needed to know that I was on the right path because inferred within his answer was that I was doing the right things. I just needed to keep going forward to find that pot of gold. And I did. And I made millions and millions and millions of dollars with that advertising campaign that I was working on at the time, which was in the weight loss niche. Don't bring nothing to the table either. If you are trying to create a mentorship or a teacher relationship, if you have nothing to bring to the table, yet you are asking for a person's time or money or advice or all these things, I mean, really it's time and money are the two things, then they're probably, like, it doesn't make sense for them to give it to you really. Whereas if you do have value to give, and it doesn't need to be monetary, it doesn't need to make them money, I mean, maybe, you're t trying to talk to an older, well-respected gentleman that has issues with women and you are just a good looking guy who's always surrounded by women. So always have something to give. Now in my case, one of my very first mentors, I actually found by, well, I snuck into this uh, kind of mass marketing mastermind um, in Hollywood at the Roosevelt Hotel. And I approached my mentor, which is Kelly Felix. And uh, he's also known as the rich jerk online and he's a highly successful marketer and i went up to him and i i i i'd heard of him and i was like oh my gosh you know like can we do stuff together but i was talking to him about how i do ppc which is pay per click advertising that's the space i come from a little background on myself for those who don't know is i'm known uh i made my first million dollars my first 10 million dollars doing what's called affiliate marketing and it's a business model where I basically buy advertising for a dollar and I try to sell enough products to make back two dollars. And then I just do that over and over and over again. And I'll just do that as many times a day as I possibly can until I'm making $25,000, $50,000 a day. And uh, I made a lot of money doing that. Now in Kelly Felix's case, Kelly Felix was very good at creating marketing pages, at doing copywriting and, and uh, at getting websites to show up very high in the search results, but he didn't know how to do advertising Google ads very well. So I had value to give to him. So when he heard that I was a highly skilled person in Google advertising and I, I could speak the jargon, I knew the talk, I had, I had a lot of results and case studies behind me that I could talk about, he said, yeah, here. And, and we started a relationship together. At first it was just emailing back and forth, but what he did was he let me in on the business model of affiliate marketing. And I learned it very quickly under his just general guidance. And he wasn't sitting right next to me showing me what to do. He would just give me vague directions. He'd say, oh, try this, or oh, do this, or oh, do this. And in fact, uh, the relationship started that his company even gave me money to spend on online advertising so I didn't have to come out of pocket at all 
And I was given the advice of what keywords worked best. I was almost given like a complete just plan, but I knew what to do with it. Other people wouldn't have known what to do with it if they hadn't already been following along the online advertising path. And that led me into my business that I'm in today, which is affiliate marketing. And it, it, it made me all my first millions of dollars. I'm very thankful for being able to be at the right place at the right time and having had value to give to somebody who is much more successful than myself. What value do you have to give? You know, think, think about that while we're going through the video or just pause this video and think about to yourself, what value do you have to give to a potential teacher of yours? Now I have two more do's and don'ts and then we're gonna go into some hacks that I found to find mentorship relationships. Now the next don't is don't be a flash in the pan. Don't be in an unfocused, enthusiastic individual, but do be consistent and persistent. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is I get these letters all the time. I get long written letters and people must have spent hours writing letters to me. I get handwritten letters. People find my address somehow and send me these long handwritten notes asking me to to advise them and be their teacher, and that's great. You spent five hours on a letter, but are you consistent? Was this just a momentary distraction of trying to find a teacher for you? Or do you truly want me to be, you know, like, you know, help you out somehow? And again, that doesn't even answer all the other ones we talked about, which is do you have value to give and all that jazz? Now, in my experience, I identified three people, three executives that have built billion dollar companies in the software space that could find product market fit. And I'm building software right now. That's what my company currently does. We create software that helps make people money. We are paying out folks. We are getting money from small businesses for doing their advertising. If you wanna learn more about the income opportunity of working with me and working with my software, that, that that's what my company does now, is check out the link in the description. It's called Marketing Tech and it's absolutely amazing and it's amazing income opportunity. If you're looking to get into marketing, but you have zero skills and zero experience and zero technical knowledge doing so. We pardon the brief advertising interruption. Now the three folks who had found product market fit in software that were not billionaires was an extremely cumbersome task to figure out. I must have spent hundreds of hours watching through interviews with different product owners and different product soft software guys that did marketing and product market fit. And if they were just way wealthier than I would even be able to have access to them. And the only way I could really figure this out was by watching long interviews, about one to two hours long each, um, involving these different software founders and executives. Now, once I had identified these three executives who had created billions of dollars worth of value for the software companies they worked for, I started endlessly reaching out to them and crafting very well-written messages and adding them on all social platforms. And guess what happened? I didn't get any responses. Now you would have thought with the amount of subscribers I have and the amount of influence I have online, I would have been able to get a response out of some of these Silicon Valley folks, but I wasn't. And I had to, I could have just given up at that point. But no, I stayed consistent and persistent. And what I did was I kept trying to find avenues to reach out to these folks through other ways. And what I did was I found that one of the folks I was trying to get in contact with to be an advisor for my company, I could, uh, he was speaking at this online conference that cost $2,000 to attend. It was a virtual conference. And I thought to myself, hmm, most of these conference apps have some sort of in, in, in conference messaging system. And maybe, just maybe, I could find a way to message him through the in conference messaging system to actually get a response out of him. Or maybe during his keynote speech, I could like, I could ask a question like in the chat somehow and he'd see it. 
It worked. I was able to message him through the in, in app messaging system and he said, email me. I already had his email. I'd already sent him a bunch of emails. So I sent him another email and finally I got a response. Persistence pays off. Now question for you is have you been persistent in your business efforts? Have you been consistent in your attempts to get a particular person as a mentor or do you usually just kind of go on little rampages of work and then fall off, fall off? What do you do? Now, last do and don't is don't pick and choose advice. So this is once you get into a mentorship relationship, once you have somebody that agrees to talk to you or gives you some advice, and the easiest way is just ask questions. Again, I love answering people's specific questions in the YouTube comments section. Do you have a specific question for me? Let me know. Type it in the comments. And again, kudos if you ask me something that isn't Googleable or isn't searchable and that really there's only one way to get an answer is ask. Now, when you get to this phase of the relationship or whenever you just ask questions and you get advice from somebody you wanna be your mentor, do not pick and choose advice. Now, I mentor people in my training courses. I have over 20,000 students, but only a small segment of them are in what's called my inner circle. My inner circle are, they're all, it's all people learning affiliate marketing, and I talk to my inner circle every two weeks on a group webinar uh, within my course, The Super Affiliate System. Now, I see people on there consistently and it's it's so unnerving, or it used to be unnerving, but I'm getting over that, seeing folks that ask for advice, that complain about things, and I give them advice of what to do, and then I see them two weeks later and crickets. And, it, and frankly, it doesn't make me want to give them more advice. Why would I continue giving advice when you're just not gonna take it? Now, what you do want to do is you do want to act fast. You do want to act completely and you want to make things happen. The advice I had gotten from my advisor was to make my software completely free. Folks, this is software I have spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars building. And I'm a marketer. I'm a marketer. I sell things, I charge money for things. If I'm creating value for somebody, the way I've been taught is I charge money for value that I'm creating. And I just try to charge something reasonable. But all, so this advice that I've gotten from my now advisor just seemed to make zero sense for me. Yet this person had created billions of dollars of value for software companies that he had worked with. Now, the whole point of having a mentor, having an advisor is getting advice that you would not do yourself, getting told to do things that you would never personally do. Does that make sense? So why is it when we get advice that goes against our instincts from a mentor or a teacher is it that we don't take them up on their advice? Do it! What? 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 Do it! Right? Now, the way I believe I was able to keep my mentor in my life was I went against my own better judgment. I went against the judgment of my entire team. Because my entire team that works with me said, John, we should be charging money. We are creating value. We should be charging money. You know you can charge money for your software. Why not? But I went with my mentor's advice. And if you want to sign up for the software, by the way, there is a link uh, down in the description. And yes, it is free. So let's go into some hacks about finding a mentor. First off, one hack. It helps to have money, okay? Having money always helps. It shows that you are successful. It shows that you are a cool person and shows that you are focused and you can focus on something enough to get success. And it also gives you the opportunity to hire mentors in your life uh, or at least get some, at least use your money. You know, in my case, I spent $2,000 to send one message through an in-conference app, right? So that having money 
helped me in my case. Having money has helped me get into lots of situations that I wouldn't normally be able to be involved in. The second mentor hack is go to in-person events. There's no better way to connect with somebody than in-person events. Especially if you're going to some in-person events regularly, let's say there's a, uh, you know, a popular restaurant, um, an expensive restaurant or club that your mentor hangs out at or the person you want to be your mentor hangs out with, make sure you're showing up weekly, make sure you're showing up daily, whatever it is, that repetitiveness, and that consistency and being in person will help you start to form a relationship. So the third important mentor hack that you need to know is positivity and enthusiasm, okay? Nobody wants to work with someone who's who's cynical, who's depressed, who's who just is not come across as a winner in life. Okay, one thing about me is I very much so work on having good posture. I'm enthusiastic, I'm positive, I am a go-getter, I make things happen. And because of this effect, because of how I hold myself in the world, I actually get people, even before I was I was YouTube famous, I've gotten people that, that just come up to me from, you know, if I'm sitting at a restaurant or if I'm walking down the street or if I'm in some area where there's lots of people, I've gotten people that just say, hey man, who are you? What do you do? I just see the way you, you hold yourself in the world like, what, what is that? Are, are, you, are you famous or something? This was even before I was famous, before I was popular on YouTube. And it's a very good effect to have on folks. Mentor hack number four is have influence, okay? Now, if I get a dumb question from somebody on Instagram or really any platform, I ignore it, right? But if I get a dumb question from somebody who has 100,000 followers on Instagram, you know, and I'll, I'll take the time to respond. Even if even if the question's answer is Googleable, that person has influence. That signals they have success in some area of their life. Mentor hack number five is do your research. Now, more and more and more, I've been working on finding a billionaire mentor or advisor for my companies. And I, I spend hours of time doing research on these folks so that I make sure I'm always asking the most valuable quality questions that they haven't answered anywhere else about subjects that are genuinely interesting to them. I also use my research as a way to figure out where to approach people. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I don't have a smartphone and I don't even go on Instagram and I don't use, I don't respond to any messages there. So doing your research is pretty important. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna give you a bonus hack, mentor hack number six, which is subscribe to this channel and like this video. Okay, folks, I'm going over stuff every single day here, or every, sorry, every single week now to help you advance in your life, to help you advance in your business, to help you become the most successful version of yourself possible, to help you become the James Bond ultimate version, the Super Saiyan version of yourself. If you are ready to learn how to do so, type in hoorah in the comments below. If you watched through this whole video and made it to this point, I am stoked to have you here. I'm stoked you're serious about changing your life, about dropping out of school, about quitting your job, about living free, living life on your own terms, living in financial freedom, and just, just kicking butt at life. So let's hang out more. I'll see you in my next video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave me a comment or a question if you have any. Thank you so much, folks.